going to call to order the December 11th, 2017 Transportation Committee meeting. I'm going to ask Mr. Ken Dawson to lead us in the invocation, please. All members are present, by the way. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the continued blessings you bestowed upon us. And especially during this season and time of year, we are drawn to thank you for the gift that you gave unto this world by the birth of your son, that we can be an example of giving to others. We pray that our families be protected during this season and that we understand the real meaning and we draw closer to each other. We ask, O oh God, for your guidance and your wisdom in this meeting today. And even as we move forward, Father, we show the unity, the togetherness that you've exemplified during this season by your gift. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All members of the committee are present. Uh, if anybody would like to uh, make a public comment, please bring a card up. You have three minutes to speak. Committee Chairman's report. I have nothing additional to report, but uh, I would like to state I'm going to move items 15 and 16 to right behind number 5, uh, and those are uh, Jerome Fournier's items. I'm going to move those up. Uh, uh, let's see, where are we? Number five, acceptance of minutes of the November 6, 2017 meeting. So move, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Lambert, a second by Councilman Cagnolotti. Any discussion? Any opposition? None. So moved. Okay, moving to uh, item number 15, uh, Jerome. It's approval of transportation impact fee credit between D.R. Horton and uh, Gulf Coast for construction of Louisiana Highway 44 road improvements. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, before you uh, is a, a credit agreement uh, pursuant to our transportation impact fee program. What's happening is that uh, Oak Lake Development is building a project along Highway 44, and they're required as part of their project to construct a full lane within uh, on fronting their project. Uh, John, if I can get this up there. Um, I'll bring this back. Um, so, as you, as you can see, I'm looking south on this plat, and this, is, this roundabout is going to be the roundabout at Conway. Conway is constructing a lane on their side of the project on Highway 44. Oak Lake's uh, constructing another lane on their side of the project, which is in the parish. Conway's in the city, Oak Lake's in the parish. This is a, a road that's subject to our transportation impact fee program, and as part of that, the project applicant, meaning Oak Lake and D.R. Horton, can apply for credits to their impact fees if they construct a portion of our impact fee program. And that's what they're asking for tonight. Um, I distributed, I think um, the Secretary distributed a change to the, to the agreement, uh, and we're proposing this tonight as part of the, the credit agreement. And I'm, um, I'd like to add that, you know, this is... In, in the view of the parish, parish president and, and the administration, this is a real win-win for, for the parish. We're going to get a, a portion of a road constructed that's a, an integral part of our transportation program. The applicant's going to construct it. They're going to go out to bid for it. Um, they're going to build it to DOT specifications. We're going to inspect it and make sure it's built that way. And at the end of the day, we get a project, all right? For that project, we're giving them credits to their impact fee program. So when they come in to pull the building permit for for each of the lots within the subdivision, they're going to be able to um, be exempt from their from the traffic impact fee because they constructed the program, the, the the road segment, right? So I'm available to answer any questions. I'd like for you to uh, reference the memo that was sent out earlier. And there were a couple of uh, changes to the cost estimate. Those changes, the cost estimate went up slightly. And the reason they went up is we included eligible costs that were design engineering, uh, surveying, inspection, things of this sort, or testing. Additionally, if you look at Section 7, um, one of the things that the applicant had asked for is that we freeze the fees uh, at the current level for a f period of five years. When we uh, had council look at this, we decided that it wasn't in our 
ordinance and we were not able to freeze the fees. So if, if the council decides to increase the fees at a later date based on the engineering use record, uh, construction cost index, those fees will apply at that point in time. All right. So when we do the calculation as to how many credits we'll get, we'll use the fees when the application occurs. All right. So I'm available to answer any questions if you'd like. Councilman Lambert. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Drome. <clears throat> How many lots in the subdivision? There's uh, 163, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. And figuring the impact fees time that that's coming out to that amount for the credit, is that what we're looking at? No, they don't. Unfortunately, they're, they're leaving more credits on the table than they have availability within the site. So part of the ordinance allows us to take that credit surplus that they have and transfer it to another project that they might okay. develop within the same transportation impact fee zone all right so they're in zone b which is the southern part of the eastern part of the parish so any project within that area they can transfer those fees to them <coughs> otherwise they'd be leaving about seventy thousand dollars on the table and they weren't willing to enter in the agreement if, if that were the case okay Councilman Court. Yeah, uh, real quick, Jerome, uh, these both lanes, uh, one being in the city, one being in the parish, these lanes, these are driving lanes? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and if you look at the cost estimate, um, Councilman Collette, um, one of the things that is in the ordinance, if they were to build just an ordinary right turn lane into the subdivision, that would not be eligible for credit. Right. So what we decided was that because they're building a full lane, the full width of their project, we would subtract out the cost that was just applicable to the right turn lane and then um, take the rest of the cost. And that's what they're getting credit for. So you can see on the, on the memo that we sent, uh, the travel lane was $668,000. An ordinary right turn lane was two hundred and eighty. dollars we took the difference between those two and the 388 will be the amount that they're getting in a credit for. Okay, so we're subtracting out an ordinary right turn lane. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. And another thing is the distribution of the credit, is that on a lot by lot basis? It will be, yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Councilman. Yeah, uh, thanks. Since this is in my district, I have had some uh, cons conversations with Jerome and company. I just wanted to point out that go back to the map and you talked about the city side of that so the developers of conway are doing the same thing so they're going to provide an additional lane you know from their property line up to the to the roundabout and we're going to match this on the parish side so you know we'll turn this instead of having two turn lanes there which it would have been there before we're going to have four lane from those property lines up to the roundabout right. unfortunately there's still a small section there that's that's going to be two lane and Mr. Fournier and and I've talked about that and we're still in the process of trying to get it's about a thousand feet trying to get that four lane so you don't bottle neck down from four lane to two and then back up to four but this I'm, I'm definitely in favor of this and I think uh, it probably takes a year or two off of the uh, construction of this you know if we were to go another method. Councilman McClure. Yeah, uh, Mr. Dawson, back to your comments. Is, uh, it, do we have the ability, based on uh, on this road being within our uh, impact fee program, impact fee program, to actually take impact fee money and cover somehow to make it a complete four lane and take that thousand, we, that, that we thousand in. We could use. I'm begging. We're, we <laughs> could I, use. I figured you were begging. I just want to go ahead and ask the question outright. Well, we could use traffic impact fee money that we've collected so far to fill in that gap. We could I, use um, uh, move ascension funds as well to, to fill in I, that gap. I just do not think that there's. I don't. You know, we we get sometimes we get one shot to do something right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't think that there's anybody that I know of that would argue about the traffic on this road. And my final question, so I'm all in favor of that, if that's possible, if the administration can work that out, and that works within our impact fee program. Yeah. And uh, just a quick question on the roundabout. I know we went back and forth on roundabouts. Is, so we we driving a four-lane into, or are we driving into a four-lane roundabout? The, I, the roundabout will be four lanes, but when it exits to the south, it'll be two. 
Okay, so in other words, that that portion of the road will not be complete yet, all right, going towards Edenborn. Yeah. So that's going to still be two lanes until that can be four-laned all the way down to another up a roundabout that's south of Edenborn. I'm just trying to, you know, inter and it's not my district, but I've, I've been knowing people all my life. I'm still trying to look out for the people on Loose Moor and, 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 yeah. and, uh, yeah. and Brittany Tower Road, yeah. you know. Okay. And that's being a major safety incident. I don't know how that doesn't qualify for some federal highway in the, in, within a safety package. Yeah. I, I just don't understand it. Well, I'd like to thank the parish president for his assistance in, in the negotiation on this and Council Member Dawson. I, Councilman Dawson. Um, just had, you know, uh, one other comment, which was that, you know, I would really appreciate that if you maybe move, put this in the move ascension just to where it could be tracked at least. You know, uh, I guess there are two things. One, that, as you know, when you come off I-10, you're going to be going south on 44. You go across by your Conway. Four lane up to that point, and that bridge is, is four lane. But then at that point, it goes down to two lane. You would drive 1,000 feet on a two lane, and then you'd come back up to this four lane but I think you know definitely would be a great improvement if we could get at least get four lane to get the traffic to that goes to that subdivision goes to Conway Plantation then on the other side of that we are working on a roundabout at Loose Moor and, and uh, are setting up a meeting actually within the next few weeks with the state to talk more specifically about that but uh, the first step would be to be able to get people into this four-lane roundabout. Just as an, a note, um, we're asking the committee tonight to approve the agreement. It will have to go to full council. So I would ask if you would like to make a motion. Uh, I'd make that motion. Second. That it, that it include the, the changes that uh, were passed out earlier. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, we have a motion by Councilman Clohart, a second by Councilwoman Cazzo. I'd like to add one thing. I'd like to... Um, do we have an accounting process for this type of situation where we're getting credits? Well, we're going to create one. This is our first. Okay. So we will be creating one, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think we definitely need to have some sort of mm -hmm. process for this type of situation. Mm -hmm. So we have, I don't know if it should be a monthly process. I think the money's going to come in much more slowly than that. But I think every six months to know exactly how many credits we're getting in yeah. uh, so we can keep track of it. Absolutely. So if we can get that process made, uh, Absolutely. put that on you. Okay. So we have a motion, we have a second, do we have any opposition? Any discussion? None, so moved. Moving on to item number 16, approval of changes to Ascension Parish Unified Land Development Code Appendix 4, Subdivision Regulations, Section 17, 410B, related to maintenance surety bonds. Mr. Fournier. Yes, um, I'd like to preface my remarks on, on the maintenance bonds by saying that earlier this year, you as the council had approved the new subdivision specifications. And in coordination with the subdivision specifications, staff feels that we're taking in roads that are really high quality for the parish right now. Um, in, the, in the past, about six or seven years ago, in conversation with some of our inspectors, we have eliminated the use of what was called fluorite in the base of the, of the roads, and there were some real difficulties with that. And we saw where some of the roads that were using fluorite uh, basically were buckling up and things of this sort, and we had to go back with some repair work. That has been eliminated. I think everyone agrees now that the roads that we're taking into the parish, uh, and uh, I know Mr. DeArmond's here and can address that as well, has been a Southern inspector for years, um, that we're taking in some pretty decent roads right now. Based on that, though, um, we've been asked to look at the maintenance bonds that, that we're requiring of developers right now. And I had meetings with um, Councilmember Cagnolotti and you, uh, Chairman Lawler, about this, as well as this um, administration and, and President Matassa. And um, with that, we feel that there probably are some changes that are warranted in here. And previous, I handed out on, this, uh, on the staff report that you had received, I noted some recommendations that we might suggest for um, changes to the maintenance bonds. I think one of the problems that we have dealt with is in multi-phased projects, where we've had um, two, three, maybe four phases of a project. And as the first phase is built, people have moved in, second phase gets built, they're using the roads in the first phase to get to the second phase, and so on down as the phases go. 
um, we're seeing a little wear and tear on our roads as a result of it. And typically in those situations, the bonds in the first phase or the second phase has already, have already expired. We've taken in the roads and any damage to those roads are our responsibility. So what's, what's before you right now is an, uh, a bond uh, proposal that would consider um, multi-phase projects as well as increasing the maintenance bond from 12 months to 18 months. Right now we require a 12-month bond from developers. All right? So we would propose 18 months. We understand that that's doable. Other jurisdictions, particularly the city of Central, uh, other places in the parish uh, have had 18 bonds as a recommendation for that. Um, so with that before you, um, these are some of the recommenda recommendations that staff would, would um, like to see implemented. All right. Okay, um, first of all, I'd like to uh, commend Councilman Cagnolotti. Uh, he has really pushed this, and he's done a really good job on this, and he's been pushing it for a while. I open up to the floor to you. Uh, Jerome, thank you for your work, your hard work. I know I asked you to compare us to other people, other parishes. I've done some research on that myself. But uh, we're not trying to punish anybody here. We're just trying to, you know, mm -hmm. we're spending taxpayers' dollars to maintain parish roads. Mm -hmm. And when we take them in, and like you said, phase one, and they got five phases, and they all go through phase one, two, you know, as they expand, they, they come in, and here come the concrete trucks, the the, the construction you know, material trucks and all that stuff and it's just happening so we're protecting an investment that's been made and like I said we're, we're this is not punitive in nature it's just to maintain and do what we say we were going to do for, with the taxpayers dollars so thank you for your efforts that's all I got one quick question Just Lambert yes and and 18 months is enough right we feel that 18 months but as you can see there's a provision in here that the parish engineer can modify that time frame. Okay. If we look at a project and we see that there may be some difficulties or, you know, we had a, a contractor or a developer that we've had difficulties with in the past and we, we can up that to 24 months, we can also reduce it to 12 months if we need. I, I try to create some flexibility in, okay. in the language there. All right. All right. I have a question about that with the reducing it to 12 months. So when would that be beneficial to the parish? Well, if there's just a single uh, project, you know, let's say there are no phases and it's a relatively small project that's going to be built out within a short period of time, you know, we could we could very likely One do street. it in that case, those type of things. But uh, wouldn't it be beneficial, though, to have the 12, uh, the 18 month? I just don't see why we'd want to go back to where we are now. We're trying to like, tighten this up a little bit just to make yeah. sure there are no problems. Yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to leave some flexibility. I mean, that would be up to you. I think it'd be beneficial to some developers, um, you know, if, if it's a very small project, as an example, that that might be applicable to, right? If you okay. want to eliminate that flexibility, then, you know, it's up to you. Councilman Clark? Yeah, I just, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you'd allow me the autonomy to stray a little bit uh, while we're talking about road bonds, I just, uh, I will talk to more with the administration I've talked before that uh, it's not just the developers but we have uh, within my district for sure we have uh, dirt haulers that are running on small narrow parish roads mm -hmm. that's over a mile in length to get to a main highway uh, to the best of my knowledge that's uh, I don't know if all of them are licensed I don't know if all of them have any type of bonds but we have it, it's causing a lot of impact on roads and traffic and uh, I know in the past we haven't been real successful in, in the bringing that type of situation you know in the hand so I, I don't know what what we're doing for the people that's tearing up the roads I, and I understand they're performing a service and I appreciate yeah. the hell out of I, it I did but, defer to DPW because there is a bonding capability that we have applied to heavy truck users on roads and and, uh, and use the word capability I, I, I know that there's capability but I'm, I'm talking about is uh, uh, you know how do we monitor and how do we ensure that someone that is hauling yeah. heavy loads uh, and we only got into the industrial part about five years ago we did with the heavy industry moving some some uh, equipment for a plant on parish roads and right. what what the effect that would be and that was in councilman Kent 
Chicksnyder district at that time. Okay. But we definitely got some impact out there, and I just don't know. I, you know, I don't want to get totally off off the plantation here, off the off the tribe. But I can tell you this: we are. Uh, that's something that we got to look at. Well, I, I think it's a really good topic. We could put it on put that on the next transportation committee it. meeting. Thank you. Because yeah. we need a process for that. Yep. Could I add to Randy yes. on that? Randy, we looked at that way back. I don't know how far back. Maybe several legal advisors <laughs> away. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our parish roads are supposed to be where any vehicle that's parish road or, you know, that can go on a parish road, our roads need to be built to that standard. Yeah. And that it was a legal problem then where we couldn't do anything when when some trucks tore up your highway. My last my last answer uh, months and months. But ago, just, just that came up. But maybe we got some revisions that we can put in there since our, then. Our roads weren't rated. In other words, we don't have a road that says ten tons only. We don't have a road that right. says five tons only. Okay, and so we either need to grade, rate the roads, whatever, and restrict it and enforce it. And I, I you know, there's a lot of bureaucracy goes with enforcement. But like I said, we could pass some laws and revisions if we had to, you know. But I don't, I don't know as it states. I agree with the chairman that we can bring this to another yeah, meeting. Fine. Councilwoman Casa. Yes, I, I, I'm with you, Randy. I, I agree with you on that, and and I think I share Todd's concerns about enforcement for certain. So, Jerome, I understand you to say, and I see it underlined at the recommendation of Paris Engineer, the time period may redu be reduced to 12 months. Or the parish engineer may require the bond to be extended or renewed. I understood you to say 24 months? Well, right now we have the capability of asking for a bond for 24 <coughs> months. Good Excuse me. Yeah, it's in our ordinance, in our subdivision <coughs> ordinance, that we can, we can ask for a bond that's 24 months in length. Um, what I'm trying to do is provide some uh, flexibility here. Let's say that we've had a project that uh, has stalled and we've had that in the last economic downturn where we've had projects that have stalled and um, you know, the developer comes back two or three or four years later and asks that you know, we, they want to pick up the project. Could be even a new buyer a of that project. A different developer. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think Eagles Landing were out there today. In fact, that, that occurred there. We wanted to be able to either extend the bond that they had initially if the time period's compressed enough for, for us to be able to do that, or we could require a new bond for that for that old portion of the project. Right. So well, that that's why we're created that flexibility. My in there. question is, I understand the need for flexibility, but shouldn't that language exist in this ordinance that it should be for twenty four months or I mean is it possible that it's for thirty six? Should we I don't want to have to rewrite this again. Right, right. And, and, well, and I don't want our developers not knowing. I don't. I don't want anybody to feel like, well, I walked in the door and now they tell me it's for 36 months. Right. And what is the, what is the magic number here? Well, I, I would say if you if you want to put a number there, it's probably 24. I think understanding from the contractors, from some of the developers, it's very difficult to get a bond. Very difficult to get a 24 month bond, and it's, I would say, impossible to get a 36 month bond. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, so if the language like to be up to 24 months, but I want to be able to have that, that, that capability, though, that we can renew the bond if that situation occurs where a project, it, it, a developer may be walking away from it mm -hmm. and they come back and they want to restart it, we want to be able to renew the bond. Now, that was the reason for that language. Well, I'm comfortable with that then. Yeah. I, just, I just had a okay. curiosity about why it wasn't stated specifically. Yeah. Councilman Dawson? I don't have anything. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Write that down somebody. Do we, uh, first of all, do we have a motion on this? And second of all, do, um, if we do, do you want to amend it? Oh, we got to sign in. I'm over here. Can I, can I speak on something? Can I just? Well, no. I mean, you have to sign a card. It, it is. Well, I'll sign a card. I mean. Okay. I mean, it's protocol for everybody.
Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, thank you. Committee, appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jerome. Me and Jerome spoke about this today. Uh, just one thing, typically what happens is, is the contractor is, is by state law responsible for a year of warranty to the developer. Not necessarily the parish, but to the developer. So typically what happens is, is the, the developer asks the contractor to put up the maintenance bond. And it is extremely difficult to get a one-year maintenance bond. You get an 18 months maintenance bond, there's very few people who will probably be able to do it. You're talking about Barber Brothers, R.J. Daigle. I've got one when I did a job in Zachary years ago, and I had to get the developer to sign it with me, and I have a decent financial statement. But a lot of the smaller contractors are not going to be able to get 18 month maintenance bond. If you go to 24 month maintenance bond, probably none of them will be able to get a 24 month maintenance bond. I think I understand the problem, I think there's some different solutions to it. I would like to discuss it. One of the things that I have mentioned in the past is, is that let the contractor and the developer put up the maintenance bond for one year. Let the developer put up a bond. The only person after we leave, the only person that can control, if I'm going through the first and second filing to build a third filing and I built the first and second filing, I'm okay with bonding the roads again because I know what I did to build those roads. But if somebody else did it, it's not right for me to go bond those roads. I don't know what those roads will were made out of, but also 90% of the traffic going on those roads are building the houses in the first and second filing. I can't control what those house builders do. The only person that can control that is the developer. So what I have suggested in the past is do two separate bonds. Do a bond for the contractor and the developer for the maintenance bond for one year and let the developer put up a, a I don't know what the amount would be, something to bond the roads out till 90% of the houses in the whole development are built not just the first, second, third filing, but all the filings. And if that, if he goes from the first filing, the, that bond doesn't expire until he finishes the second filing, and it doesn't finish until he finishes the third filing. That way, you got some money out there to fix the roads on the entryways coming in and out of subdivision until the development is at least 90% complete. Thank you very much. Thank you, Al. Councilwoman Kaza. So how far off from Jerome, thoughts on that? suggestion and how far off are we from what Billy just said to the question again how far off is this bond language from what Billy suggested well I don't think we're too far off if you read in the very first uh, second sentence here it says um, the subdivider shall keep all you know so so basically it's asking that the subdivider himself which is typically the developer post the bond all right now as as mr. Aguilar said you know typically there there are some small developers in the parish who are unable to get bonds so they're having to go to a contractor like him who who has a really good reputation and has a long history with a bank uh, to be able to get that bond all right so that's a situation that exists now um, you know without any changes to the ordinance you know even for a 12-month bond as he mentioned all right so right now um, you know, I don't know that that we're that far off. And and if you would like uh, for us to work with them, we can certainly do that. But I think the language right now pretty much covers that. Now, when it comes to the subsequent phases, um, like he mentioned, there is that possibility that that the third phase of a project will be built by his company. Whereas the sec first and second phases were built by someone else. He has no control over first and second uh, construction um, you know, of, the, of those roads and the quality of what was built out there. That's, that's certainly not his um, capability to, to, to judge that. Um, and in those cases, I would suggest that we require the subdivider in phase three to sub to bond for those roads in, in one and two. And I think that that's the language that appears here. Um, you know, so that that would be my comment to that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman Cagalotti. But we still, the, the ultimate decision is made by the parish engineer, which we have control of, correct? Correct. That's, that's what I'm going after. So Absolutely. we have some flexibility, and I think that's what you keep saying we're trying to build right. in. Right. So that we, you know, we can control it. Yeah. And we understand the situation out in the field, um, but again, we're trying to pr protect the parish and the parish roads. And that's the bo our bottom line. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. 
Do I hear a motion on this? So move, Mr. We have Chair. a motion by Councilman Cagnolotti. Let me uh, clarify. I know there was some talk about, um, I guess, a 24-month period, which would probably have to come in uh, after the word extended to 24 months uh, in case there's an amendment or anything. I just want to make sure we don't miss anything. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second by Councilman Lambert. Do we have any opposition and any discussion? None. So move this on to the full council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fournier. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we're going to jump uh, around back to number six. Uh, roads to be considered for acceptance into the parish maintenance system as follows. Uh, Luke Drive and Industrial Drive. Uh, Ricky D. Armour, that you are. Thank you. Back before y'all tonight to introduce some roads to be brought back into the parish maintenance system. Uh, subdivider is uh, subdivision, Ascension Commerce, fifth filing. Y'all want to do them individual like yep. normal? Yes. Luke Drive, 1,356 feet, point forty-five. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. We've got a motion by Councilman Lambert, a second by Councilman Kangalati. Any discussion, any opposition? None, so moved. Industrial Drive, 2,316.35 feet. So move, we have a motion by Councilman Cagnolotti, a second by Councilman Lambert. That's any a, opposition, any discussion? None, so moved. 0. 0.70 miles being added. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Now we have uh, number seven, Department Report, Mike Enlow. Good evening. Um, Wanted to uh, start with the move ascension program. <clears throat> As you can see in your packets, uh, the total budget did for the CDCs, the contract consultants, is up to seven million. Encumbered to date is four million twenty thousand three hundred fifty-eight dollars, and then you see the balance there is uh, just under three million dollars left for the contract consultants to do design work. You can see the list of task orders. Uh, all the, all of the immediate action projects have been tasked out. Notice proceeds have been given along with um, the signalization and tra uh, traffic studies at uh, specific uh, intersection intersections that we plan to upgrade. You'll see the phase two projects list down below that. Uh, the task order for uh, Neil Schaefer to do the LA-1, LA-308 uh, signal timing and synchronization. Uh, I think we have that on the uh, parish president's desk as of this afternoon for uh, authorization. Task order number 10 is uh, for the Seabro Road safety widening. That was issued on 12-4. They've begun surveying. We're looking forward to getting that going. Uh, we're in uh, negotiations with Meyer Engineers and Evans Graves for the Tiggy Duplessis, Tiggy Duplessis um, and Duplessis safety widening and Evans Graves with the Germany Road safety widening. Germany Road and Duplessis uh, are two of the projects that we received uh, uh, authorization from the CRPC to the tune of uh, around $7.3 million, and that'll come to a realization in 2020. What we hope to do, uh, we hope to get by putting these in the phase two projects now is to get uh, in a, in a, ahead in the queue when 2020 rolls around and they do issue uh, that money, we may be able to receive more money on top of that if we're ready and have a shovel ready project. So that was the intent there. That's it for the uh, move ascension update. Uh, uh, I think Jeff is prepared to give another update uh, with more detail. If there's any questions, I can answer on that. I'll go ahead and ask for those now. Any questions? I just quick. one quick question, Mike, on the yes, sir. Uh, task order eight uh, signal timing and synchronization. Yes, sir. Is that what's the timing on? I know we just got it issued on the. What was it October 12th? October 12th, right. Uh, I, I think they're they're in the process of, of they should be wrapped. Uh, I don't know about wrapping up. They finished the field work. We wanted to get that done before the holidays mm -hmm. uh, to do these types of studies when you're out in the field to do the counters and all that. You have to do it before the holiday period so that uh, it, it it's done the right way. You get the true account, uh, accounting. So um, I'd have to defer to Jeff on that. Um, I, I, I think they're going to be probably wrapping it up here in, in next month probably just after the holidays in January. Um, and, and then that, okay. that effort is going to, that information is going to go directly to District 61 traffic engineers. 
and they're going to implement those changes for the whole corridor. So okay. we should see some real, you know, efforts, and I'll keep this committee updated on, on what the changes would, would be. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Dawes. On the uh, light synchronization, we talked about on uh, US 61 doing that uh, uh, synchronization. Now, what is this? What what is this that we have here? Uh, this is this is uh, the synchronization of what's out there right now. Um, I haven't really looked into the intelligent <coughs> synchronization. I, I think it's a a, a very a good concept. Um, I, I I think. Um, it, it, well, I'm wondering why we're spending money on on this if we're looking at doing the intelligent synchronization. Preliminary. Uh, Preliminary you. what? Okay. If you don't mind, uh, Jeff can give you an update on that. Okay. When he comes up. Yes. Sir. And then also, uh, uh, really, that's uh, what 3089. This LA 1308. That's the West Side synchronization. Yes, is that what that is? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Did, it, it, yeah. Is that is that a? Uh, this came from DOTD. Whatever we need to do is is. Is that something that's already been? We've already agreed to fund. Yes, sir. That was well, when did we do that? The last transportation meeting. Okay. Because I'm hearing that really, I'm not sure if uh, you know we want to spend that money on on uh, two lights on the west side. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily two lights. It's the intersections and prob and and maybe other other intersections off of the off of the actual corridor to help synchronize everything in that in that area. Well, I'd like to know the scope. We can get you that. I can get you that. Okay. Okay, go on, please. Okay. Uh, future asphalt overlay funding scenarios still waiting on CRPC. Uh, they're fairly busy right now. We've been uh, talking to them weekly about this, and uh, we hope to have something very soon. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll get Jeff up here to do the update uh, on the move ascension. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Council Members. Um, pleased to be here today to give you all an update on the Move Ascension program. And uh, what I have in your packets before you is some highlights of what has been taking place since the last time I was before you. Uh, as Mike just mentioned, uh, some of the design contracts have already been executed. Uh, you see the, the three along the Roddy Corridor, uh, Henry Safety Widening, the St. Landry uh, Ashland Connector, Roundabout at 929 and Parker, and Seabro are all executed and uh, underway some a little bit further along than others, and I'll hit some project-specific details for y'all uh, in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> as you recall, also, we uh, had uh, several task orders for some traffic analyses. Uh, some turn lanes along LA-73 at Oakland, Brown, and Henry. Uh, those are complete, and they, they're finalizing the reports now. We also looked at three intersections for possible roundabouts, and you see them listed, 74 in Bluff, 73 in 427, and 929 in Bro. In addition, we just talked about this traffic signalization, uh, signal timing and synchronization along uh, US 61 and uh, LA1 slash 3089 in the city limits of Donaldsonville. Uh, that I think in the Donaldsonville uh, area, to answer your question, Ms. Dawson, are five signalized intersections that would be affected by this particular task order. Um, and I do have some details on the, uh, the intelligence uh, that I can hit in, uh, in just a minute as well. Um, you know, additional task orders, as Mike mentioned, are going to be issued to some of the phase two uh, to get jump started on that and get some of those projects through the design period to be able to then leverage federal dollars later for right-of-way acquisition and construction. Uh, and with that, that segues right into the CRPC uh, on, uh, on item two there. Uh, we're working closely with them on, on what's required and what we're going to be able to do to capture this money. Uh, as we've mentioned in previous meetings, they are allowing us to shift previously approved $9.3 million to some of our Phase B uh, projects. Uh, in addition, the recent call for projects for the fiscal years 20 to 22, Ascension Parish was uh, allocated an additional $7.6 million in federal uh, funding as well. 
So when you look at those two, we're looking at federal dollars of just shy of $17 million. So with the upfront investment and in move ascension on Duplessis and Germany, with the parish match and with that $17 million uh, allocated by CRPC to Ascension Parish, we're dealing with just over $22.5 million in projects ready for Ascension to utilize in conjunction with the CRPC program. And that's an investment looking at approximately about 25 cents on a dollar as far as bang for the parish's dollar. Um, moving on to some uh, project-specific details. Like I said, the, the ones that are underway and are in varying stages. Uh, the first one is Long Roddy from 61 to 935. Uh, Shrek Kirkendall is the uh, design consultant, and they're moving ahead of schedule. Uh, they've already completed survey, utility investigations, and all the geotech. They are, have begun uh, both roadway and bridge design, and they've already uh, begun property surveys. Uh, the second is the continuation uh, north of that, all the way up to 621. Uh, T. Baker Smith is the design consultant on that one. Again, they're ahead of schedule. They've completed all of their survey, utility investigations, geotech, Hydraulic design. I'm expecting by the end of this week their 60% preliminary design submittal, and they're expecting to have their property surveys done by Christmas. So um, that's uh, they're, they're a good bit ahead of schedule. May I stop you real quick? Absolutely. At what point can we start working towards right of way acquisition? When, is it when property surveys are done, or wh where do we? Once property surveys are done and we have enough design, then what they're going begin, to begin doing is the base right of way maps. Okay. Then we'll go and do the field inspection, plan in hand, and joint plan reviews. Once that's done, and they can do final right-of-way maps, that's the day we get final right-of-way maps, we can start acquiring right-of-way. Now, ahead of that, we're going to be doing the title research reports. But until we get the final maps, we we'll then can begin appraisals and the actual op, uh, um, acquisition, where we put together just compensation packages, go negotiate with property owners, and, and such. Okay. The title research reports are on uh, Henry and the Roddy Corridor, those three safety widening projects. Uh, now that it's just approved uh, the task order for the right-of-way acquisition, we're going to start that now. I mean, we're dealing with several hundred ownerships along those routes, so we're going to begin on that now. That way, when we have the base maps ready and we go to that joint plan review, we can immediately uh, finalize those maps. That is the key to everything with regard to acquisition. Um, the third project is the roundabout at Parker and 929. Bucart Horn is designing that. Um, they've finished with the survey and the underground uh, utility investigations. They had, um, now DOTD is committing $1 million towards that project. So we are working with the department. We've had several meetings with them because we do have to follow their procedures and policies uh, because they are putting some money in. Uh, we've also actually already had meetings with both Shell and Marathon because we crossed three of their pipelines, and they are very uh, have very restrictive rules. They are on board. They're working with us, and actually the meetings were very successful. So we're excited about that. So as, as, for, as more we can move on, we can move on in the design process without fear of, uh, you know, pipelines shutting us down. Now, uh, as in past agreements, we will have to uh, pay to case some of the lines, but... They're certainly working with us, and we're glad about that. Uh, Henry Road, the fourth one, uh, Glenn Shaheen is designing that one. Uh, their survey and geotech is all complete, and they're approximately 25% complete with design. Uh, St. Landry to Ashland is a Volkert project. Uh, their 60% preliminary plan design I'm actually uh, expecting this week, and they've already begun uh, property surveys and right-of-way maps. And we've met on site, and uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Dawson setting it up, Mr. Ken Dawson, met on site with uh, BASF, and they are on board with the right-of-way donation. And as soon as we get these maps complete in the next week or two, we can approach them again and begin that active uh, donation sale and file it with the clerk court's office. So that is something that we anticipate wrapping up here shortly after the first of the year. And just add something to that statement. Yes. We did get all the document from uh, BASF. Um, O'Neill has reviewed them. It will be on the council agenda for you guys to approve the president to sign them. So that is already moved forward. The 21st agenda? Yes, the 21st agenda. 
Um, <clears throat> the third Roddy segment, uh, SJB Group, is there. They're just getting uh, underway with survey and Sue, and they're due to begin in a couple of weeks. Uh, we talked about the traffic analyses. Uh, they're all complete for the roundabouts and turn lanes. They're finalizing the reports. The roundabout reports have to be uh, sent to the DOTD uh, for their review and comment as well. And then we'll be making recommendations on moving forward with design based on what comes out of those reports. The um, U.S. signal timing is uh, all the, the field work is complete. They're finalizing the report, and uh, Neil Schaefer will have all of their deliverables by the end of this month, and that will go straight to DOTD. They will take this information. They will run it through the timing software and uh, do the timing design through the software, and then once that's done, and that is in the neighborhood of about a month process, they will then go and implement it in the field at each controller, and then Neil Schaefer will come back in, and they'll verify that it's working according to the model and test it with the travel runs. So uh, it's springtime. This can all be complete along 61. And uh, when I finish my report, if, if you don't mind, uh, Councilman Dawson, I will circle back and answer some of your questions on the intelligence. Uh, Seabro Road is the last one that's currently under design and underway now. Uh, survey and utility investigations have begun. It's underway. And by the time that that's complete, we estimate beginning uh, design early part of January. Uh, with regard to right-of-way acquisitions, there are two projects. Uh, the Roddy Road Church Point Roundabout um, that we will begin acquiring right-of-way once uh, the DOTD has accepted the new updated design. And we have, uh, have verified that the maps will not change. Um, DOT is going to commit a million dollars to this project. We've been working with them on that, although the, by the uh, current entity state agreement, the parish is responsible for acquiring the right-of-way and relocating the utilities. So um, I think actually on this agenda uh, late, later part of today is, is the uh, request to extend a uh, fence to make us contract to update the design and finish this project out. The second one is the Babin Road uh, bridge replacement over Bayou Narcy. That is 100% design. Maps are complete. We've done all the title research reports. We've sent out the notification letters. And uh, we can begin the uh, right-of-way acquisition process now. Uh, DOTD is also going to fund all of the construction and the construction inspection at approximately a value of about 550000 The next one we just mentioned is the St. Landry uh, connector that property maps and, and are being done to go with that right-of-way donation uh, filing in the, uh, in the courthouse. You know, as part of this program, what we continually do is to track what other projects are going on through the DOTD, through the MPO, and I just wanted to show you all um, that the DOTD has let just over $121 million of construction projects in Ascension Parish in the calendar year 2017. Uh, the specific list is attachment B on your, on your briefing there. Um, preservation program, Mike already touched on that, so I'll, I'll skip over that part. Uh, ongoing activities for Move Ascension, as always, we continually reach out to all stakeholders. Uh, we've been looking into the road transfer and what makes sense for Ascension Parish. We've come up with uh, several ideas, and we're going to finish analyzing that to bring some recommendations forward to the administration and, and to this committee. Uh, we've developed uh, initial program schedules and budgets, continually updating them as more of these task orders get executed and uh, going to stay on top of that. We're almost finished with developing program manuals for Move Ascension and for Ascension's transportation program moving forward, even once this uh, program um, is over, and uh, we expect to be delivering that right after the first of the year. We've engaged our uh, environmental subconsultant, already begun all of their field uh, analysis and some of their uh, reconnaissance that the Corps will require. That's ongoing. Uh, this Thursday is a utility summit for Move Ascension that we're uh, having at the complex uh, right across the street, the governmental complex. And uh, basically what it is is bringing all the utility companies in that are going to be affected by this, and there, there are a lot of them, and introducing them to the program telling them what the program is, what are the roads in the program, what is going to be expected of them 
uh, as far as moving their utilities out of the way and when can that happen and talk about like a schedule of engagement with them. So this is going to be very high level on Thursday, but then we're going to be having project specific meetings with those specific utilities affected by each job as design gets uh, further along and then we'll drill down on those specifics. Did want to make you aware of that though. And lastly, ac action items are um, task order for public information and outreach. Uh, Mr. Daniels has asked us, uh, similar to what he had done on the uh, green light program, to add a few more or add some public meetings um, to this program to get out in front and advise people of what's happening, uh, some of the changes uh, to the roadways. Um, so we have uh, uh, submitted a, uh, a scope and it's in, under consideration uh, by the parish now. Uh, also, uh, at the last few meetings, uh, there's been a call for uh, uh, moving the master plan off pause. So uh, again, at, at y'all's uh, discretion, we will stand at the ready to, to do that. Um, and of course, we want to get on a regular schedule with steering committee, which is a joint uh, committee uh, made up of uh, several members of this panel, as well as the administration. Uh, and maybe make it more of a, uh, a, of a monthly meeting to keep you all apprised of what's going on and have real-time decisions uh, that we can make uh, programmatically. And with that, that's, that's the end of the brief I had for you uh, uh, tonight, but I stand ready to answer uh, any questions. And then, of course, I can uh, talk to Mr. Dawson's point about the intelligence on the signal timing as well. I'm going to recognize Mr. Dawson. Let him go on that issue. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> I did a little... Uh, looking into this with several of our traffic operations engineers, uh, both at the DOTD and uh, with the consultant we've hired to do some of the signalization analysis. Now, the article you had forwarded was about the uh, five intersections in Lake Charles area that the Sassol plant uh, paid for. Those were, um, it's called an adaptive system, where it looks like at real time traffic, as it's approaching from the various approaches, Analyzing is the cycle time and lengths appropriate and makes real-time adjustments. But each intersection is not connected. It does it for its own specific inter uh, intersection. Now, where it is a system, though, and it's adaptive, is that the next intersection is still looking at approaching traffic. So even though they're not connected, it is systematic uh, approach, and it is adaptive, and it is in built-in intelligence. Now, where it makes sense is at a plant like that, at intersections like that, where they're about to build a multi-billion dollar facility where there is no standard uh, traffic patterns on operational flow, AM and PM peaks. It's a 24-hour operation, depending on what's going on. Trucks can be you know, at any hour. So it's, it's a good test case over there. You know, things in the Orlando area around Disney World, you know, where they have all the different parks, make sense because there are no distinctive patterns. Whereas on airline, there is. There's very distinctive AM and PM peaks going, you know, north and, and south uh, throughout, throughout the day. We do already have out there what's called an advanced traffic controller. So it can, it's not the adaptive intelligent one like in Lake Charles, but it can change uh, green times and cycle lengths by registering, for example, a side road that's given, let's say, 70 seconds of green time. Well, if it only needs 50, it's going to then take 20 away and add it to airline for that green cycle. And it, it does have those capabilities. The district engineers can also do it remotely, change this. But what hasn't happened is the software hasn't, hasn't been the timing designed and modeled in so long, it's, it's out of skew, if you will. So that's what this um, effort is going to uh, hopefully fix, is taking the conditions now in 2017 projected out over uh, to 2037, I believe, and then uh, re retime, resignal, and then sync everything up because all the controls on airline are connected by fiber optics. So, you know, I asked the traffic operations engineers because I'm not a, a traffic engineer myself. How much more efficient on airline itself could this new adaptive system be? And they said, well, because of the very distinctive patterns you already have, maybe 3 to 5% more efficient, and it's a very, very costly system. I think the five intersections in Lake Charles, I think the, uh, the cost was around $2 million. 
Uh, we have 19 that we're uh, modifying and modeling to upgrade the signal timing on airline. Um, that's all the information that I, I have right now on the system. I can continue to look, uh, dig into it if you would like. I can even probably set up either a meeting or a comms call with the experts so that I'm not just taking notes and regurgitating it, it back to y'all. Um, but if y'all would continue to like to look into this, I would certainly do do that. Well, I am curious. I mean, since we do have the fiber optics and we have a controller there, you know, with, is, is, can we do that for a reduced amount? You know, perhaps, I don't know what they had at, at Sassel or at Lake Charles, you know, whether that, whether that helps us to reduce the cost or not. I would think it probably would, and, and the reason is because I think those five specific intersections had to be uh, redone almost wholly. I'm not sure what they had out there before, but they didn't have anything like the hardware, more or less the software. So I think we could look at some reduced costs, uh, certainly with that. Um, now, it is proprietary. Trafficware, I don't, Trafficware Solutions maybe, uh, is the, owns the rights to this adaptive system. So... Uh, you know, we could even get somebody from Trafficware to uh, come and meet with us on that. Uh, the traffic engineers that we had doing the analysis at Neil Schaefer are, have met with and have uh, worked with these uh, folks from Trafficware before. That might be possible to get them in here as well. Or okay. set, set up an offline meeting maybe. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, necessarily advocating this True. At, at this point in time. and. You know, but if we can see some improvements on that myself, anecdotally, you know, if I go down airline early in the morning, there are times that I sit there at a light and there are no cars coming in the other directions. Uh, you know, so I, I don't know. Maybe what you're telling me is is that the current system uh, sorely needs an upgrade. Is, it, is that correct? And, and we may see, you know, what the result of that is before we decide to take this step. I'm just thinking out loud now. Yes, I agree. I think I think with this new model uh, signal timing, with the equipment that's already out there, which is somewhat of an advanced controller, um, I think that you know early part of next year, once it does get implemented by the DOTD, I, I think we should see a great deal of operational uh, flow that is much improved throughout the corridor, and then we can back that up with because the last part of the scope of Neil Schaefer is to verify those results with with post implementation travel runs so we can see the the true nature of the improvements and then maybe can regroup and see if we want to go for a little bit more enhanced uh, at that time if you would like okay thank you do we have any other questions none very good thank you okay. uh, thank you uh, oh bill go ahead i thought it was just on the uh the no, lights but i'd like to uh to just ask about this you know i'm uh on the so you have all these in the uh, design phase, uh, all these projects in the design phase. I guess myself, I'm used to seeing uh, what the actual is versus the scheduled. You know, do you do you track that? As far as how far along in the design they are, as far as yeah, I mean, so what we've gotten here in the report is they're 25 percent finished. I see in a couple of places, but you know, how does that compare with with uh, where they're supposed to be? Well, I have noted that several of them are ahead of schedule, and I have program schedule, but project-specific schedules for each one of these. And so we are tracking them. Uh, and, you know, to, to be honest, when we're staying on them pretty good, and, and they're, so far they've all stepped up and are performing. Uh, several of these are, are quite a good bit ahead of schedule, uh, so particularly you do the have second Roddy. You have that capability to give us scheduled versus actual on the, on the design. Yes, sir. Is that sir. correct? Okay. Thanks. Would you like that the next meeting? That's what I'm used to seeing. I mean, I'll leave that to the committee. I think it'd be nice if we see that the next meeting. But what? Is that possible? Well, absolutely. I mean, I can get you whatever information you would like, but let me make sure I'm understanding what you would like me to provide. Would you like to see, uh, would you like me to note in a bulleted format, he is, you know, 15% ahead of schedule? Would you like to know the projected date of the next deliverable versus the scheduled date? I mean, normally what, what I'm used to seeing is is that here's here's actually where you are, a percent complete versus projected. Uh, okay. That's all, I mean, for this, at this point. I'll have that as a bullet for each project next time. I don't know. 
Randy's got a lot of experience in that himself, so I'll Just defer to that. Actual versus schedule. No yeah. problem. Assuming that there was a defined schedule. Yeah. There was. So we're going to assume that on this side of the podium right now that there was a defined schedule. So just actual versus schedule and what was the schedule. You yes, know, sir. Maybe a refresher. Uh, Will do. Tell me the traffic. Uh, you know, you know, years ago I worked for Steve Strength and them and everybody in, in uh, MPO in New Orleans and on some stuff. And uh, they had some – the technology, that was eight, nine years ago, and that technology's blown away now. And uh, uh, what we find is, I know what Bill's talking about, sitting at a red light and there's nothing coming, okay? And, uh, but we do, we definitely, I believe we've got some, uh, some availability to make some improvements on, on, on the, you know, the traffic sequencing. Agreed. And, uh, we've depended on DOTD for a lot of years to, <coughs> to be the, the leader in that, you know, based on input from the municipalities or the government's things. So, Well, I'll I tell you, the, the department's excited that, that we are willing to uh, partner with them in this, and that's why they say that you know, when we provide this information that we're giving them by the end of this month, they will then go ahead and model it with their software, and they will implement it for the parish. I know, I know that back then and for the last 15 years, 20 years or so, that they, they, they were uh, holding hands with uh, Federal Highway on traffic safety, and it's basically, you know, rerouting, you know, monitoring incidents, rerouting, and, and changing light phases, cycles to, to reroute, you know, through a corridor and things like that. So uh, you know, I don't know how much of that is actually going on right now. Well. They, the DOD has implemented a um, somewhat of an incident management right. program, and I think that's what probably you're alluding to, mm. uh, for things exactly like that. All right. Uh, real quick, uh, on, on your report on Appendix A and uh, Phase 2, the ones yes, you, uh, you got in parentheses, only through pre-construction design. I'm just going down the list. I looked at uh, LA-74 and LA-928 Bluff Road intersection improvements. Do you have any idea on what that is? Yeah, that was one of the, uh, up at the front, one of the traffic analysis that were done to look at putting a roundabout there. Yeah. The analysis is complete. They're finalizing the report, and that will be submitted to the DOTD. Yeah. Now, of the three roundabout analyses that were done, the, the one you just mentioned, the one 929 and Brew, and then the, the 73 and, uh, and 427, uh, only two of those have to go to the department for review. Uh, they all show that uh, a roundabout uh, significantly enhances the operational uh, flow of the intersection uh, and is and is warranted. Now, uh, part of the report would be a cost-benefit analysis to show, well, yes, okay, the roundabout works great, but what if we added turn lanes and signalized uh, these intersections, you know, uh, where's that cost-benefit? So that's all part of the report and it's taken into consideration. And I guess I'm playing catch up a little bit, but you got another one, 70, LA 73 Bluff Road connector. Uh, yes, sir. That was just added to the list. That's actually a uh, new road connector. Yeah. And uh, that's something that the DOTD is looking at. That's something that they're talking about um, uh, permitting that subdivision going in, but they won't let them connect to Bluff um, until, um, or the road connect to Bluff until. Uh, you know, an agreement is reached on, on actually funding the roadway. This is this has just been one on the no, list I just to want, track. I need to clear that up for me. Yeah. I just yeah, I mean, Mr. Low. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, these some of these projects we're moving forward on. Yeah. And, and but this is basically a cumulative list list of sure. the some whole of world. Wish so, list. Yeah, I understand. That's right. So so yeah. some of them are, we put them down on paper and we're we're, we're Going through the yeah. process of you basically, he alluded to where it's at. That's yes, sir. I just couldn't get clear, clear in my head. Where would that be? There's only so many ways. There's only so much 73 in Bluff Road that's looking at it. That's right. Yes, sir. So, all right. Randy, if I can add to your comments, that's the last spot, as DOT DOT details me. That's the last spot. If we can't make it there. There's no place to do it. And so we are going to be, it's 
talking at, at some point with the landowner in hopes that that uh, they'll have a, a spirit of cooperation with our community. They're a, a long-standing old Dutchtown family, mm -hmm. and we believe that there's no reason in the world that they might not be willing to, uh, for the benefit of the future of the region, the Dutchtown region, that they might not be willing to, to be cooperative on that effort. But that spot, once that, it, that is a key, as DOTD tells me, unless that's done, nothing they do on Highway 73 improves the quality of the traffic. That there is a real need for another four lanes, I don't care how many lanes, why'd you make it if you don't give somebody access to the Bluff Road at another spot? We cannot solve the, the problems at the intersection of Seabro. What is our plans for Seabro? That road is just being widened. As a safety that's what I'm saying. So that's, that's, that's your first one. Then you got right. this Carter you're looking for, then you have 74. Correct. Um, but we are talking bro and this new connector is pretty close to each other yes yes are, indeed. But what, the, what I understand that DOTD is recommending is that Seabro would would likely become a right turn in right turn out and the light would go away there the light would be put at the new connector and that would become a left turn that would a become right a turn. full not to mention it's it's fairly narrow and yeah. uh, safety widening is definitely warranted on that on Seabro yeah, and I'm just yeah I understand that because I thought you know you know you know, I was just wondering what the total future plans for Seabro sure. you know four lane Seabro and then you gonna turn around and put this it's a block away. No, right? it's not a four lane. It's yeah, just right. a, you know, it's there's just a capacity a, issue. And then we've and already safety. got a we've yeah. already got a red light and all at, right. at Bluff Road. Okay, nice. got a red light there. Got turn lanes, all that. So, you know, you're looking at a, ra a roundabout, right? Which would help to slow traffic down. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. You got to slow down when you turn, but uh, I just wondering about that particular corridor. That that I know exactly. I know the piece of land. I know I know who, I know the family. I just that was the only place I could figure in my mind. I wanted to just explain. That's going to be hard sell. Especially since there is going to be another yet another school built on the Bluff Road. It's well, important that we get some through traffic. It's 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 especially important to our safety personnel, EMTs, and the fire department. Uh, there's only the well. There's only the Bluff Road, or you got to go all the way uh, around. I'm, and, I'm, uh, so I it would be very helpful. I don't think I'm totally speaking out of school, but you know, how many schools we're gonna put over there? That you know, this we have 73 needs to be total four lanes from one end to the other anyway. I agree, and uh, and, and DOTD is is doing the the study of of 73. All the way to 30. Yeah. That it needs to be widened all the way. But they have they have told me more than once in this room that it's not going to be the problem will not be solved unless we can find another way between the bluff to enhance the issue it, it will improve the, it will allow the the widening of the road to to be fully effective otherwise it's it's still going to be a congested highway without another cost well what about bluff road this bluff road is heavily congested also Bluff is not so bad. Not so bad. I mean, it has some peak hour issues. It's not bad until you turn on Seabro or 74. But when you turn on Seabro is where your problem comes in. Yeah. Exactly. Or when you get to 74. I, I think it's, there's a, I can't remember which, which engineering firm was uh, given the responsibility to do that corridor study, but that corridor study is being done by a, a firm. And there is also a lot of discussion about an, another interstate uh, access uh, on 74, and that's being studied in that in that as well. So there's a, there's a whole corridor study being done for that region. The uh, Highway 73 corridor study that you're yes. referencing, uh, Bucard Horn was hired by the Correct. department to, uh, right. to perform that. And they have had, it's been a slow process because. The ball keeps being moved on them, as I understand. Uh, there's first the discussion of an, an interchange at 74, then there was some discussion of an interchange at Corner View, and then there was some discussion of the addition of a new road from Corner View to some place. I hadn't quite figured out where that lands on the map. But all of that has been, uh, their scope keeps, keeps increasing in order to determine where that interchange needs to be. 
and what we can accomplish with 73 as a widening project without that uh, other the north south or east west route i can't remember i'm directionally challenged mm -hmm. and and just just to close on what i was going to check on is just uh on that same phase two list as you got harris savoy road please please uh that that road is dangerous that road has no shoulder it has 90 degree turns it has a parish ballpark down it and if there's anything happens at the corner of uh where where 431 makes a corner up and uh by demco then that's the cut through road right so please keep that mic high on your list thank yes, you sir okay moving on uh, i got one more can i get one more i promise yes. this is the last one. <laughs> oh. On the money, I want to talk about the money and and the uh, you get the 17 million that that I that I see that we're getting an additional funding from uh, uh, the federal government. Is that correct through CPRC or through state and federal? What is that? That's all federal. That's all federal, and we're going to have to put up about six million dollars in matching for that. Is that is that calculation correct? The um, I have it in the transport the unitary plan, which we're going to talk about. After the oh, this the discussion, but, the but the STBG greater than 200k matching match is is that line item for for matching of these projects. So you've got 16.9 million of federal funding, and you say total including pre-construction parish match is approximately 22.6. So the difference in, is that we're putting up the difference here about six million dollars. Uh, yes, what that includes from the parish is the 17 approximate federal funds, the 20% matching parish dollars, and then the pre-construction design effort for those two roadways as part of the phase two move ascension. So, and, and when you add up all of that, that's where you get the, just over 22 and a half million. Okay, so my question is that this says fiscal year uh, 2020 and through 2022, is that? That's for the 7.6 million we just received as part of the call for projects. The 9.3, we have access to immediately. Oh, okay. Yes. So we'll build that along with the whatever matching is required for that. We'll build that into the move ascension yes, program. Is yes, that sir. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and those the previous CP, CRPC projects, it was the STP greater than 200K, and the name has changed to the STBG or block grant, state transportation block grant. So you'll see those itemized uh, the matches in the unitary plan. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's just say good work. Sir? I'll just say good work, $17 million additional dollars to put in the to program. To me or Jeff? <laughs> Both of you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mike, uh, do we have anything else to add to the department report? Can we move on? Uh, we can move on. If you, and, uh, I've got a few items here. You've got the list of uh, DOTD uh, project updates. If there's anything you guys want to talk about on that, I'd be uh, happy to discuss. Do you have any questions discuss. on those? No, we'll move on. Uh, number eight, approval of resolution and capital improvements plan as required by Louisiana Parish Transportation Act. Mike Enlo. Right, this is what I was just discussing. It's, uh, I think, uh, the unitary plan. It's uh, just showing uh, the multi-year budgeting and how we expect to spend our transportation dollars. Um, the Parish Transportation Fund Act is based on size and our population, and uh, we get that money from the state. So they require us to pass a resolution. Um, with all the details of, of our spending. The move, uh, Mr. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Lambert, a second by Councilman Kekmalotti. Uh, any discussion? Any objection? None, so move. Moving on to number nine, approval of final change order for ENG-14-23, St. Landry, one connector road, Mike Enla. Yep, this is just to finalize everything, get the contract uh, uh, flush before we uh, request substantial I motion. That, I make that motion. For okay, second. Second. Yes. Motion by Councilman Especially Lambert, second by Councilman Floor. I'm sorry, excuse me? Especially since it's a deduction. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a reduction. Yeah. It's it's a reduction. Any discussion? Any objection to this reduction? No objection to the reduction, so move. Moving on to number 10. Proof of substantial deduction. completion for ENG 14 23 St. Landry Edenborn Connector Road. Did I just do that? 
That's a, that's a, you that's said that. One. That's another one. Yeah, it's the same one. Same one. It's substantial completion of, so we can uh, motion. close that. Second. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion by Council McClure, second by Councilwoman Cazzo. Any discussion? Any objection? None. So moved. I want to, uh, one thing, it, thank you guys and thank the administration for helping with that project. That was a very uh, quick-paced project that was turned out. So thank, thanks to uh, Councilman Dawson as well. Move right over and get that other connected, Ashland. Exactly. Yes, sir. <laughs> quick. Get it quick. I think we're on our way pretty uh, quickly yes, on that one. Yeah, yes, Number sir. 11, approval of balancing change order for ENG-17-12, asphalt reconstruction overlay 2017, task one. Yep, this is, uh, uh, again, to, to get the task order uh, squared away. That was uh, for the coastal uh, bridge. They have the 2017 road overlay. We're prepared to issue the second task order on the, uh, I think, remaining roads uh, that will take them up to uh, their contract amount or just beyond, um, but under the budgeted amount for 2017. That will be running in conjunction. Their, this contract is going to be running in conjunction with the R.J. Daigle 2018 reconstruction road package. Mm. Do we have a motion? motion. Got a motion second. by Councilman Cagliotti, a second by Councilman Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? None, so moved. Uh, moving on to number 12, approval of substantial completion for ENG 17-12, asphalt reconstruction overlay task. So moved. Okay. Second. By Councilman Lambert, a second by Councilman Cazzo. Any discussion? Any objection? No, moved. Moving on to number 13. That's correct. Approval to renew and extend contract with Fenster Maker to finalize the design for the Roddy Road Church Point Roundabout project. Yep. Uh, we've, uh, or Jeff, uh, reached out to O'Neill, uh, our council, and uh, requested a, uh, an opinion on if we could um, uh, do this with Fenster Maker. They had brought this project under the uh, previous administration to, I think, around 90, 90 95%. Uh, and in situations like this where it doesn't make sense to use anybody else, uh, they, he approved that. So we're in negotiations with them. We haven't finalized the amount, but uh, it is in the budget to get that done, and we're going to try to phase the construction of that to get ahead of uh, one of the widening segments in Roddy Road. So, motion. We have a motion by Councilman Landerberg, a second by Councilman Cluart. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any objection? None. So moved. And uh, moving on to number 14, approval of proposed ordinance to authorize the Parish of Ascension to purchase or, uh, or acquire rights of way and or servitudes for the Babin Road Bridge Replacement Project. Yep, this is uh, the off-system bridge uh, program. Uh, we're going to do these, uh, if, if not project-specific, uh, we can do multi-projects per O'Neill's uh, uh, advice. And um, this is just something the state needs uh, uh, to go out and get the right of way. So move. Sorry. We have a motion by Councilman Lambert, a second by Councilman Cagliotti. Any discussion? Any objection? Sorry. None. So moved. Uh, moving on to item number 17. Motion. We've got a motion second. and a second. So moved. 